your voters out there don't think like that. But they but that attitude, means they don't have the information. OK, but 90 percent of the voters don't have the information. If you're out there busting your tail to make ends meet and to pay your bills and you're going to work every day and you got a family to take care of and you got to stay you in New York City, you're getting stuck two hours of your day, you're stuck in traffic. You got to say you got a whole bunch of stuff to go through. You don't have time to know what you and Maybe I Maybe you need to listen to the news when you're in traffic. Now, what's crazy, though, is that the view ladies, they're all attacking each other right now after the Donald Trump win. And they even brought Stephen A. Smith onto their show. And we thought it was actually going to be like conversational, but they actually attacked Stephen A. Smith after he clapped back over Trump supporters, blaming them for being ignorant and not watching the news. The same news and mainstream media that's been lying to them all this time. Now, I don't know if you guys have heard, but breaking news, Elon Musk actually filed an $80 million lawsuit against Whoopi Goldberg and The View claims that they're lying about me. So real quick question, guys. Do you think that The View has been lying about Donald Trump and Elon Musk over the last I don't know how long? Let me know in the comments down below, guys. I disagree. I'd like to reframe the conversation. I think Bernie Sanders is wrong. Oh, boy. I think the more relevant question actually is what is wrong with America? Wow. They call this show The View. They call it The View, right? But The View is it really should be their view because Bernie Sanders is wrong. I'm wrong. The average American is wrong. We're all wrong. Apparently, the only people People who know anything are the smartest people on the planet and they just so happen to make up the whole cast of The View. What is wrong with this country that they would choose a message of divisiveness, of xenophobia, of racism, of misogyny over a message of inclusiveness? All I can deduce is that it's the messaging. It didn't get through to people. They're not paying attention. That's all. Wow. Oh my God. Does anybody else hate The View? I mean, I don't even understand how they're still on TV. But to be honest with you guys, I honestly think that The View has single-handedly sent way more people over to Donald Trump's camp than any other show, than any of Kamala's wasted campaign fund money. I mean, all you have to do is listen to The View and their biased opinions. They really do not reflect the view of the average American. I really almost feel like they need to change the name of the show. They should just call it like The Propaganda instead. <laughs> I mean, these these ladies, I feel like their goal is to like pump up the left, to pump up the Democrats, clearly pump up Kamala Harris, but they failed miserably because all they need to do is just keep talking. Because when you listen to them, if you can even stand them, if you listen to them, all they end up doing is driving people away from the left, <laughs> driving people away from Kamala over to become Trump supporters. And we just got word that Donald Trump just won Arizona. So not only did, did a Republican, Donald Trump, win the election this time, but he won the popular vote. He destroyed her in, an, in the electoral vote. This is unprecedented, guys. Condescending. There is a, there is a condescending. The, the way that the left speaks to its voters, it, it really is. A message of joy and yep. inclusiveness? No, the <laughs> message of point is, I don't blame Joe Biden. I don't blame Kamala Harris. I blame a messaging within the Democratic Party. You don't blame well, the Republican Party Can I just Party finish my point, please? I obviously have a problem. Anyone has a problem with Donald Trump. The bigger question should be, yes, Sonny, why did they vote for him? Yes. In sweet- Man, like, Sonny is, is she, she's so annoying. But here's the thing. Like, first of all, let the woman speak. Let her get her freaking point across before you freaking attacker it's just it's unbelievable it is so catty at this point they're so hell-bent on getting their own personal view across they don't want to hear anyone else's view who happens to be counter whatever theirs is you see Donald Trump is not the kind of guy that's just going to get walked on you know and and look at Kamala Harris she is such a flip-flopper you know I mean between her policies she can easily be persuaded Donald Trump's a businessman and let's be honest with you like he's probably not the friendliest of people. I'm sure he's not a bad guy. He's not a mean guy. But the thing is, is like other countries fear him. And that's why we need him. And that's why I voted for him. I feel like The View wants every American to just do like this. Get on your hands and knees and follow and listen to whatever The View is telling you to do. We're still here. People, I, I when I got out of the car today, I saw mailmen, people with their kids. I saw people living their lives, and that's yeah. what we have to do. Well, Whoopi, what you saw with your own eyes is pretty much impossible because at least for the past four years, every single one of you on this show, including your friends in the mainstream media, you told Americans that Trump is like Hitler. 
You compared his supporters to Nazis. You called him a fascist, a racist, a dictator. And now that he is elected, you're telling me that Americans are going on with their lives? Like, why are you even sitting here, Joy? You said if elected, Trump will put you and Whoopi in jail for being comedians. On funny comedians, I should add. Maybe that should be a crime. I don't know. But all of you are sitting here and you are just fine. And that should not be the case if you really believed what you said about Trump. I don't understand. Now, just to clear things up, guys, this is an edited clip. So the guy was not actually on The View, but he did raise some very good points here. So The View with its hosts have been very critical of President Trump. We know that. They've led the charge when it comes to calling him different names, and it's pretty clear that they just don't like the guy. And for a group of women who kind of see eye to eye, they're now starting to unravel here. They're now arguing with each other, and it's surprising to see. Who would have thought that they would be disagreeing like this on national television? I do think that in this post-mortem that needs to happen with Democrats, they need to think about why wasn't she given more lead time? Why didn't Biden give her six months or a year to run? But there's bigger pictures. That's a micro. There are some macro issues here. The fact that the nation elected somebody like Donald Trump, who even people who voted for him, I talked to so many of these people, will say, I don't like him. I don't like the things he says, but I felt like my life was better under him. I think that we, I think that a lot of Democrats missed the moment. They were looking at the micro and not the macro. Do you so think there's, the Republicans there's, missed the moment? What about a, a postmortem on the let, Republican Party? Which Frank, is the I was Trump just party about right to say they just swept, though. The, I mean, I, I've been they talking about what I'd like to see from the Republican Party. They won, but, but they're America, morally bankrupt. But America just gave them. And that is just the beginning of all this, guys. Things spiral to a point where they just have to be stopped from arguing. But the thing is this. Alyssa's making a good point here. Something that the other hosts are not very receptive to, even while Alyssa was making the case for voters who decided on this election. Let me just make my point here. So we have people talking about, well, how did he win Michigan? Because Democrats are saying, oh, she should have talked more about Gaza. No, union halls were empty. Dearborn went for Donald Trump. This is not about a micro issue like Gaza. It's people saying the cost of living is too high. The wages are too low. My life felt better under him. And I know what we'll say. Well, Goldman Sachs says the economy will do better under her. The analysts at, um, right. at UPenn and Wharton. Well, we'll see. Nobody who is struggling to make ends meet at the table, like how am I going to pay this bill, cares what Wharton That's professors because they were say about the economy. With misinformation. Well, right. Now, you're probably thinking what she's saying makes absolute sense, and it does. Instead of blaming everyone else around them, the Democratic Party should look inwards. They fumbled this presidential race, period. They were way too focused on destroying Donald Trump's name, and they forgot the most important factor. They forgot that voters wanted to hear about actions that will be done. So when you have the president telling you that she won't do anything differently from the president, then you have a problem. And what's funny is that she said this on their show. Well, if, if anything, would you have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind in terms of, and I've been a part of, of, of most of the decisions that have had impact. Now, this was a huge deal for a lot of voters, including myself. And if you keep up with social media, then you would have seen the intense response to the statement, with some claiming that this ended her campaign. We will hold social media platforms accountable for the hate infiltrating their platforms because they have a responsibility to help fight against this threat to our democracy. And if you profit off of hate, if you act as a megaphone for misinformation or cyber warfare, if you don't police your platforms, we are going to hold you accountable. I think we need to push back on this. There, there's no guarantee to free speech on misinformation or, or hate speech, and especially around our democracy. But I also think there are Americans who are uh, engaged in uh, this kind of propaganda. Uh, and whether they should be civilly or even in some cases criminally charged uh, is something that would be a better deterrent. And I want you to look at how Sonny responds to Alyssa when she makes a case for the border and actual issues that we face. Whoopi also had to step in because things are getting a little bit heated here. Watch. We talk a lot about these different demographics and these assumptions of where they're going to go. Latinos in Texas, a, dis a district that's 97 percent Latino, went 75 percentage points for Donald Trump. Why? Misogyny. It's on the, no, that's it's why. on the border. It's the misogyny. border crisis is on their doorstep. So, so, and they were begging people to care about it for years. We need to take sexism. some less. That's what that was. The lessons are not Knock, knock. Who's them? there? Oh, my gosh. It's Whoopi. <laughs> I would be sorry. <laughs> Thank you.
The only thing I want to point out, people did what they did, and they will reap whatever benefits they're going to get. However, let's talk about the real stuff. Your pocketbook's bad, not because the Bidens did anything, not because the economy is bad. The econ the, the, your grocery bills are what they are is because the folks that own the groceries are pigs. Now, if you noticed, Sunny wasn't listening to what was being said at all. All she was doing was waiting for her turn to respond, which is kind of productive to any argument, almost as if she didn't care what was being said. All she wanted to do was prove her point and her point alone, saying that it was just sexism and misogyny, pretty much saying that anybody who voted for Trump in Texas is a sexist just because they didn't vote for a black woman. So if anything, She's the one that continues to make this about gender and race, right? And isn't it funny that Whoopi continues to defend the Biden administration for its lapses with the economy? As if Bidenomics worked for many of us, right? Let's talk about the reasons why stuff, gas is high, not because the Bidens didn't try to help, but because the folks who control that yes. decided, I want more money. But see, when, and you, you said a great thing and I wanna reiterate it. When you have been running for two months, against somebody who's been running for almost nine years. And Meanwhile, she forgets that this administration spent so much money that it raised inflation to historic levels. They badly wanted to continue this narrative that the Biden-Harris duo did their best, which in and of itself is misinformation, which now brings me to the best part of the show. Sonny wants to blame voters for not knowing the truth. Can you believe that? Meaning that whatever people are feeling isn't based on reality. And she tried to argue this against Stephen Smith. Watch. But I think that's where the mistake is made. Yeah, You're saying it's ridiculous. I don't disagree with you. Yeah. But most of the, the voters out there don't think like that. But they, but that attitude, means they don't have the information. Okay, but 90% of the voters don't have the information. If you're out there busting your tail to make ends meet and to pay your bills and you're going to work every day and you got a family to take care of and you got to stay you in New York City, you're getting stuck two hours of your day, you're stuck in traffic. You got to say you got a whole bunch of stuff to go through. You don't have time to know what you and Maybe I Maybe you know need to listen to the news when you're in traffic. So it's our fault because we need to be listening to all the different propaganda that's being spread, right? To believe that things are actually getting better. But as we've seen, the voters made their voices heard. The majority of the country does not believe in the lies that these shows spread. They voted with their own minds outside of this political bubble that they want us stuck in. And one thing's for sure, the people wanted Trump to lead this country, which kind of reminds me that mainstream media continues to deny the fact that Donald Trump has already won. CNN is still in shock and they're making excuses right now. We have to figure out how to understand, talk to, and listen to the half of the country that rose up tonight and said, we've had enough. A lot of people disagreed with the notion that Trump would become president again. We've all heard it. In fact, there was a lot of anger towards him even running. He's been called names and even compared to Hitler. But with most of that behind us, liberals are now besides themselves as they prepare for the next four years. Watch. How did we get here? How did we get here? What in the Alice in Wonderland nightmares is going on right now? All I can say is how fucking dare you? If you voted for that man, if you voted for anybody other than Kamala and you live and you live in one of the states that it was, you know, close, or if you didn't vote, fuck you. Uh, go to the Senate race. It's not gonna happen. Go Kamala. <laughs> I chose family, I chose women, I chose America, I love you. How the fuck is this still happening? All I've ever known politically is hatred. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done with you. I'm done with you and your mother and your sister. I'm just done with all of this. I guess specifically picking Kamala Harris as their candidate was a bad idea, especially since they ousted Biden and they forgot what their voters wanted initially. We know for certain that Nancy Pelosi believed that Kamala could get the job done, mainly because she was an integral part of pushing Biden out of the way. She led the push from mainstream media to question the president's mental capacity. And while she never said the quiet part out loud, she whispered that Kamala needed to take over, 
which is why it's fitting to see her almost weeping as Kamala Harris conceded defeat in this year's presidential election. Now, I'm not real sure if she's sad that Kamala Harris lost or she's extremely depressed because Trump won. I'm sure it's one of the two, though. Now, I want to get back to Kamala Harris's concession speech because it kind of sounded like one of the best ones she's ever done. There, however, is a twist, so watch until the end for that. Watch. People who are watching, it is okay to feel sad and disappointed, but please know it's going to be okay. On the campaign, I would often say, when we fight, we win. But here's the thing, here's the thing. Sometimes the fight takes a while. That doesn't mean we won't win. That doesn't mean we won't win. The important thing is don't ever give up. Don't ever give up. Don't ever stop trying to make the world a better place. You have power. You have power. And don't you ever listen. When anyone tells you something is impossible because it has never been done before. Maybe Kamala should have just been her true self because this was actually decent. Up until the point in the speech where it actually starts to sound all too familiar. When was the last time that they had a female Democrat leading the charge? A candidate that also lost to Donald Trump? Well, it seems as if her words have actually been recycled as they copied parts of Hillary Clinton's speech and basically pasted it into Kamala's. Watch. The outcome of this election is not what we wanted, not what we fought for, not what we voted for. This is not the outcome we wanted or we worked so hard for. Earlier today, I spoke with President-elect Trump and congratulated him on his victory. I also told him that we will help him and his team with their transition. Last night, I congratulated Donald Trump and offered to work with him on behalf of our country. Over the 107 days of this campaign, we have been intentional about building community and building coalitions, bringing people together from every walk of life and background. We've spent a year and a half bringing together millions of people from every corner of our country to say with one voice that we believe that the American dream is big enough for everyone. So at this point, we really shouldn't be surprised that even her concession speech was scripted. Her lack of authenticity led many voters to stray away from the exact same book. And now many of us can say that we're finally turning the page. But the tears continue to flow on over from the left as we've seen with Doug Emhoff and Tim Waltz. I'll be honest with you guys, I won't miss either one of them jokers. We also have Senator Claire McCaskill who went on MSNBC and absolutely broke down after Kamala Harris's defeat. Watch. You okay? I think I'm okay. Tell me what you're thinking. Well, I'm so proud. Uh, I'm so proud of her. Um, I don't think people realize how hard it is to get to where she was. Um, as a woman, getting elected DA, it's not easy, guys. People don't trust women to be in charge of making decisions about life and death and crime and being, frankly, a supervisor in some ways over police. Her fighting through the primary thicket of California politics to become attorney general, really hard. I mean, this is really hard stuff. For her to be selected as vice president after what I think she would tell you was a very disappointing presidential race where I think she kind of lost her footing and was listening too much to consultants, frankly, and wasn't, it didn't really exude who she was. And then to be vice president and to step into the most difficult situ situation in the world where she had to be completely loyal to Joe Biden and respectful of the fact that he had chosen her, but yet maneuver in a situation, I mean, such political skill, it is just inspiring. People who don't understand what she had to do to 
get to this moment. Well, guys, the great wealth transfer is in full effect. And, you know, whether it's Donald Trump that ends up winning the election or if it's Kamala Harris. Oh, God, we're in a we're in a we're in a world of a pickle, as my grandfather would say. Our freedoms are being stolen, guys. Credit card companies are out to get us. And if you don't understand the game, well, you end up getting played by the game. Now, if you're anything like me, guys, you know, you were uh, probably out of shape, maybe in debt, uh, living paycheck to paycheck and just feeling like the system was just completely taking advantage of you. I remember for a long time, I could rarely ever get any time to spend with my wife. And it's kind of funny because uh, where I used to work, I used to work with a lot of married men. And a lot of those married men would always complain about their spouses as if they really just didn't even like their spouses, which is sounding like a pretty horrible situation. But that was the case for many of them. They didn't like the, they didn't like who they were married to. But I was different. Anyway, through trial and error and through a lot of pain, I figured out how to gain freedom and also lose a lot of weight and actually get in shape. And guys, I'm gonna be honest with you, that was a game changer to no longer be living paycheck to paycheck, figuring out how to get the credit cards to pay me, the power of a strong credit score. I pay thousands of dollars less per year for the same house as my neighbor, just because my credit is better than his is. And this is not to brag. I mean, but this is the truth. The banks are literally taking advantage of the poor. It's like the people who can least afford it, they're charging the poor what is like unofficially called a poor tax or a tax on the poor. I mean, I'm now at a point where, you know, like, Number one, I don't pay for credit cards. In fact, credit card companies pay me to use their cards. And I figured out how to build a lifestyle that is just ultimately very, very healthy. I lost a tremendous amount of weight and I put on a lot of muscle. But when I was struggling, I wish I knew people who knew these things. So anyway, I decided to create a community of like-minded people who are also interested just like me in living better. So if you guys wanna join my community, it's called the Liberty Pursuit Network. It is brand new. Come on over, I'd love to have you guys and join like like-minded people be positively motivated by others who are also on the same pursuit so i'm going to leave a link for you guys so you can join me over on the life pursuit network in the description down below this video so check it out guys and let's not be a victim of this great wealth transfer that is taking place right now now i covered this in a previous video where van jones just loses it on air guys make sure you watch that after this one but as always thank you so much for being here thanks for hitting the like button and subscribing we'll see you guys next time Bye.